In the world of cyberpunk, behind all the glitz and glamour, there is lots of depression and misery. Everything has a price, even the humanity of people. It's just a matter of which corporation is willing to pay more. Control is everything, and most people are powerless against these mega corporations. Many choose to stay far away and accept their fate by selling off their humanity, while others rage against the machine, fly too close to the sun and get burned brighter than the stars in the night sky. One of those people was David, an anomaly in his own right, but it didn't start there. There was another before him. His name was James Norris. And this is his story. I saw and knew what life was missing. You lit a flame that consumed my head. But before we move forward, a quick reminder to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I made this video because of the support I got on the previous video on Agonus. Check that out if you haven't and let's jump straight in. There are many similarities between the story of David and James. Both are the result of the aftermath of the fourth corporate war. The worst of all the corporate wars till now. If you didn't know, the world of cyberpunk is different than our world, such that the corporations have equal power if not more than the government of the countries themselves. How? It's because these mega corps make more profit than the entire GDP of some of the countries. And instead of countries fighting for money and resources, it is the corporations who rush in to get as many resources as they can from each other and establish their superiority and monopolies. And it does get nasty. They are willing to do anything just to get a little bit ahead than their competition. And by anything, I mean anything. For context, the fourth corporate war started with a global conflict between two corps that you might not have even heard of, Sino and Otek. They are basically the people who control most of the ships on or under water and the transportation of goods between regions. Sino or Corporation International Nautical at Oceanique. I'm not even gonna pretend that I pronounced it correctly, I'm sorry. Is a French corporation and represents the European superpower. While OTAC or Ocean Technology and Energy Corporation is an American corporation and represents the American superpower. While America and Europe have been in constant conflict in this world as a result of Europe siding with the Soviets during the Cold War, these corporations have been fighting in the shadows trying to one-up each other. But it all escalated when a German shipping corporation called IHAG, IHAG, IHAG declared bankruptcy. And both of these corporations wanted a piece of that. That sweet, sweet IHAG. It was a golden opportunity for both of them, and whoever would get the resources from IHAG will stamp their superiority over the waters. <laughs> it started small with stock manipulations and economic warfare, but both of these corporations representing the superpowers were too evenly matched and were in a stalemate with their regular tactics. Both of them were getting desperate as more and more people were realizing what this will eventually do to the economy. That's when they started to up their game go out in a full-on war against each other and get help for the military power needed from the military mega corps. OTEC used the help of American armaments manufacturer and security force Militech and in response Sino hired the Japanese mega corp Arasaka who were at the forefront of the attack and weapons at that point. Both Arasaka and Militech who were not looking for direct conflict with each other and just joined the conflict as bystanders to make profit and show off their capabilities to the world. But a series of unfortunate events, which I don't want to go in this video because it's already getting long and just the setup, led to both these giant mega cops at each other's throats. If you want a video where I deep dive into these corporate wars, let me know like you did previously by liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. And I'll be happy to make a video about it. This stuff is really fascinating to me. Moving on. This was the first time a conflict between two corporations resulted into an even worse conflict between two other. And there were insurmountable casualties unprecedented in any war. It led to both Militag and Arasaka developing and testing newer and more dangerous weapons. The best way to power up the muscle force is with cyberwares. But there was always a drawback to chroming up your soldiers. With each new cyber implant, the human mind loses its grip on reality and the risk of cyber psychosis increases exponentially. But like I said before, in the world of cyberpunk, Everything has a price, even the humanity of people. And it was just a matter of which corporation was willing to pay more to win the conflict. 
Both of them engaged in more and more inhumane experiments to get what they wanted and James Norris was one of these experiments. There isn't much about him I could find but I can make educated guesses about his story from the tidbits we do know for sure. James Norris was a former lieutenant colonel of the new United States of America or NUSA military who showed extreme resilience to the cyber psychosis with being able to acclimate easily to more and more dangerous cyberware and plants. He was a tall burly man who from his early age excelled at military combat and showed that he had a smart brain to back it up. Thinking of new tactics while making split-second decisions to gain upper hand against the enemy, Militech took notice of his capabilities and saw an opportunity here. While their opponent Arasaka was successful in making an unstoppable force in Adam Smasher on their hand, Militech had already lost one person they had similar to Adam, Morgan Blackhand. I won't go into much detail about Morgan because it will open up another can of worms which we do not have the time to go into right now. Maybe I'll make a whole separate video about him, let me know. But for this story, we just need to know that Morgan was one of the only person who could go against Adam Smasher. Militech was in a dire need of someone who could be the version of Adam Smasher. And James Norris had the resume and skills to become that person. While he was serving in the NUSA military, Militech supplied cutting edge cyberware to this soldier who was gaining more and more popularity for winning the battles he participated in taking charge and coming up with different tactics. The Sandwiston was probably the first implant provided by Militech. This was no ordinary Sandwiston. This Sandwiston was an experimental cyberware that enabled the user to move much faster than it was possible for a normal person's body to have a kid. Even with any other version of Sandwiston out in the world that they could equip. Previous experiments showed normal soldiers not able to control their limbs as their muscles were getting neurosignals faster than the muscle fibers themselves could react, breaking them in the process and amputating the user. But James Norris was anything but a normal soldier, and to Militech's surprise, easily got acclimated to the experimental cyberware, and it became his most prominent upgrade that made him even more dangerous and a force to be reckoned with. James took notice of the benefits of the cyberware, he could move faster and clear out a dozen of soldiers in the blink of an eye. Slowly but surely, he started depending more and more on this cyberware in the battlefield, even though he was only supposed to use it when he absolutely needed it. There came a point when his body was deteriorating with the overuse and he had to start using stimulants to negate some of the adverse effects of the cyberware on his body. In the meantime, conflicts got worse and the enemies were starting to upgrade themselves with powerful cyberwares too. If they couldn't defeat him with sheer strength and tactics, they can outnumber him. James needed more. If he couldn't depend on just the Sandwiston every time, he would get the upper hand with other means, and Militech was more than happy to provide him with more cyberwares. He got chromed up with many cyberwares one after the other. He got subdermal armor, body plating on his torso and right shoulder which made his body resistant to most of the bullets. He got equipped with mantis plates in his right arm and projectile launch system in the left. Very risky upgrade with the unknown knee plate cyberware in his right knee but he could handle it. He enhanced his eyes with the optical cyberware and the software controlling all these different cyberware systems were protected from Netrunners with military grade self ice encryption. With each cyberware implant, he was losing more and more of his humanity. He started to lose control of his grip on reality and one day in a battle killed everybody on the field, including his own team. The NUSA military had no other option but to court martial him. They couldn't afford to have a cyber psych risk on their team. That's exactly what Militech wanted. They wanted a one man tank like Adam Smasher who is able to do the job no matter who he kills in the way. They provided him with even more powerful and experimental stimulants to help him keep his sanity. He did a few jobs for Militech but slowly even the experimental stimulants were not able to help him. And one day when he was heading to the Militech building in the city center, he started having flashbacks to his battles in the military and completely lost his grip on reality as he attacked a bunch of NCPD officers patrolling outside the city center. But without actually having the total control of his actions, he was taken out by max stack officers, breaking his ice encryption and shooting him in the face, as we saw in the intro of Agenos. James Norris, a failed Adam Smasher, far from being able to defeat Adam, couldn't even make his name into the Night City Legends. He is one of the side characters which we know very little about, but he was the first human that they showed at the beginning of Agenos, or whatever was left of his humanity for a reason. His death was not in vain and instead created another legend in the Night City. 
and his name was david martinez thanks for watching i really enjoyed making this video hope you had fun watching it and if you did consider sharing the video to other fans of the series it really does help out the channel and helps me make better content let me know what i should make the video about next in the comments or if i made any mistakes but that's it for today and i'll see you guys in the next one Stay connect out. Psycho that that